So let's look at how to find the nth term rule of a sequence. So let's just talk through a thing. So the a few things first of all. So the n in the nth refers to the position of the numbers in our sequence. So here's where n is 1, here's n2, n3 and so on. So the n refers to the position that we're in. <clears throat> so we're going to try and come up with a way of writing down the rule so that we don't have to keep going up. Say I wanted the 23rd term, it would be a little bit tedious to just keep adding and adding and adding until I got to the 23rd. It would be useful to be able to just go straight to that term and work it out. And that's what the nth term rule will allow us to do. So how do we figure out what it is? Now, essentially, all of these sequences are actually times tables which have been knocked a bit out of sync. <clears throat> so in order to work out which times table we're actually dealing with in this case, what we do is work out the difference between the numbers. So 8 take away 5 is 3, 11 take away 8 is 3, 14 take away 11 is 3. So each one is different by a factor of 3, by plus 3. That means we're actually dealing with our 3 times table. Now, I know it doesn't look like it at the moment, all right, but I'm going to write the 3 times table underneath. And what you'll notice is we've got our 3 times table but in order to get these numbers above, each one has got 2 added to it. So 3 plus 2, 6 plus 2, 9 plus 2 and so on. And so the nth term rule for this one is 3n, because it's the 3 times table, plus 2. Now, what I've just done is not how I would normally go about working out the nth term rule. I just wanted to demonstrate and see if I could help you understand what's going on here and why, when we write down the nth term rule, it's not n plus 3, because a lot of people find that confusing, because this is plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. But when we write it down here, it becomes 3n. And that's because really we're looking at our three times table that's just been moved along by a factor of two in this case. So to find our nth term rule, each time we work out what the difference is. So 15 take away 9 is plus 6. We check a couple to make sure we're right. 21 take away 15 is also plus 6. So that means that the beginning of our nth term rule is 6n. So now we need to know what to put on the end, which sometimes can be added on, sometimes it's a takeaway. And the quickest and easiest way to find out what needs to go here is actually to go back a step, if you like. So if we're going backwards, we take 6 off, and that would be 3. And so because that's a plus 3, this will be plus 3. So if we just check it out here, so this one here is when n equals 2. It's the second one in the sequence, so n equals 2. So 6 times 2 equals 12, add on 3 equals 15. So you can see that that rule will work. So now I can take that rule and I could use it for whatever term I wanted. So if I wanted to know what the 21st one was, I'd put in n equals 21. So I would do 6 times 21 which is going to give me 126. We add on the 3, so the number of the 21st term would be 129, like so. So let me just demonstrate a couple of others. So... Here we have 31, and then the next one is 28. So this time, the difference is minus 3. Let's check it again. So to go from 28 to 25, we have to take off minus 3. 
So that means that we've got minus 3n this time. Again, we can work out what's going to go here by just going back one step. So our sequence going this way is minus 3. So if we go this way, we have to add 3 on. So that would have been 34. So minus 3n plus 34 is what we need there. Okay. So let's look at this one. Again, we've got another decreasing one. So to go from here to here, it's minus 9. We check it out again. 51 minus 9 gives us 42. So that means we've got minus 9n. And then let's go back one here. So we need to add on 9 going that direction. So 69 is what we need there. Okay, so that's how we work out what the nth term rule is. Okay, so I'm just going to recap what I've demonstrated briefly before about how we can then use the nth term rule to work out the next term. So if this is our rule, the first term will be when n is 1. When n is 1, 1 plus 3 gives us 4. So the next one will be when n equals 2. 2 and 3 gives us 5. When n is 3, we'll have 6. When n is 4, we'll have 7. When n is 5, we'll have 8. So there's the first five terms of our sequence there. So that was a simple one. Let's have a look at another one here. So when n is 1, we'll have two ones, which is 2 plus 6. So that's going to give us 8. When n is 2, we'll have two twos, which is 4 plus 6, which gives us 10. When n is 3, we'll have 2 times 3, which is 6, plus another 6, gives us 12. When n is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 6 gives us 14. And then when n is 5, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 6 gives us 16. So one final one here. So when n is 1, we'll have 30 minus 2 ones, which is 2. So 30 minus 2 is going to give us 28. When n is 2, we're going to have 30 minus 2 twos, which is 4. So 30 minus 4, which is 26. When n is 3, we're going to have 30 minus 2 threes, which is 6. 30 take away 6 is 24. When n is 4, we'll have 30 minus 2 fours, which is 8. 30 take away 8 is 22. And when n is 5, we'll have 30 minus 2 times 5, which is 10. So 30 take away 10 is 20. So that's how you can use a rule to work out what the terms are. Sometimes you might be asked to do as it does here to find the first five. Sometimes they may ask you to just find one term, but a big number ahead.